This episode is sponsored by Wacom, Wacom Wacom.com. As a reminder, one lucky artist who participated in this episode will receive a Wacom Cintiq Pro 13. And that's pretty damn cool. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. Um, I've been having a really good time doing these podcasts, I hope everyone's enjoying them. Um, I decided for this intro just to kind of, you know, I I really want to just kind of be real for a minute here. Um, I kind of feel a little hesitation, to be honest, uh, to be open and and truthful about certain things in my life sometimes. Um, But the truth is, for my career as an artist, there's there's been ups and downs. There's been amazing things that that have happened to me, um, amazing opportunities. Um, like when I got to paint uh, six stamps for the U.S. Post Office, that was pretty cool. Painting the the Pope for Time Magazine's Person of the Year, that was an awesome thing. Um, you know, working on the the TV show Shit's Creek and uh, Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland with Bobby Chu. Um, you know, there's been really cool things. Also, teaching for schoolism is is such a great thing. I love doing that. Um, I'm I'm really glad that um, Bobby um, reached out to me years ago to 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 be a teacher for the school. So there's really some cool things, awesome opportunities. But you know, as an illustrator, there's also the downs. There's the, there's the times where, um, you know, it's very stressful. Uh, checks aren't coming on time, and you know, and that I'm actually at a, you know, it's funny. I've had, I've had people, there's, there's people out there who, who know me, you know, they, they've, they're, they're fans of my work and they know me as this successful artist. And, uh, and you know, it, it's kind of a funny thing because yeah, I have been successful. Um, and I, you know, I just did a time cover recently and, you know, um, but you know, I've had people, you know, say things that elude to the fact they think I'm super rich or something. I even had a one person at one time, you know, say something to me about, you know, it must be nice having maids uh, cleaning your house and stuff like that. Uh, oh my God, that's friggin' funny. <laughs> I don't have maids. Um, you know, uh, that's it's very far from the truth. Um, and, uh, you know, but the, right now I'm, I'm, I'm having, I'm going through a really stressful time. I'm not going to lie about it. I'm, it's been a, it's been a rough, uh, couple months just, you know, I've been, I've been doing work, which is good, but the, the checks sometimes take way longer to, to arrive on time. And what ends up happening is I get behind on bills uh, right now. I'm behind on a lot of bills and it becomes super nerve wracking and super stressful to focus um, on, uh, you know, uh, on my work and different things like that. Um, I'm currently working on an oil painting that I have to have finished this week. Um, it's, it's coming along very well. I'm very happy with it. Uh, I just have a little bit left to do, but I don't get paid until, you know, until the painting is sent off to the person and they approve of it. And then there's an invoice and it's a federal job. So it takes longer to get paid. And so I won't be seeing that money for weeks and weeks and weeks. And, and that's scary, <laughs> you know, rent's coming up uh, in a few days and right now I don't have the money and I'm just waiting for checks to come. And uh, I guess I'm just sharing this with everybody just because um, I know there's a lot of illustrators out there or artists uh, who want to be illustrators, um, who want to, to uh, you know, to do the kind of stuff that I do. And I'm just trying to relate. I'm not trying to complain. Um, poor me, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not asking for for, um, you know, people to feel sorry for me. That's, that's not what this is about. I just wanted to take a minute just to be honest and open and real about, you know, what it's like, you know, it's, it's stressful. Um, at the same time right now, um, my mother-in-law is, is staying with us and my wife is super stressed out, uh, because she's, you know, she's not only taking care of a, a one-year-old baby or a year and a half old baby, but now her mom, um, she fell and broke both her wrists and, um, you know, she's in a lot of pain and she, she needs a lot of help and, uh, we love having her here. She's, she's, she's funny. Um, she likes to watch a lot of Kardashians. <laughs> so we've been watching a lot of Kardashians here, which is kind of, um, new for me. That's for sure. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but, um, you know, that's life. And I just wanted to be real, uh, and just, uh, just kind of talk a little bit about what's going on in my life right now, you know? And so, uh, maybe, maybe some of you guys don't care or, or not, but I, I kind of figure if I'm going to do this podcast, I, th- I think it's best if I, if I be honest about things and be real with people. And, um, I'm thankful, uh, for the Washington examiner, um, who's given me a, a few jobs in the last couple of weeks. And, um, so that'll be nice. And I look forward to working with them again. Um, but it, it is a stressful thing being a freelance illustrator. I never know when the next job's coming. Um, and even when you get a job, it doesn't mean you're going to get paid for a while, you know? Um, I've been waiting weeks and weeks and weeks for particular checks, um, that the work's been published and seen, you know, weeks ago, months ago. Um, and that's just, that is just kind of what it's like being an illustrator, um, from my perspective anyways. Um, I love doing it. I love my work. I get excited every time I get a job. Um, I, I love the process. I love illustrating and drawing and painting, and I'm very grateful for the stuff that I've gotten to do. And, um, in situations like this, it's really easy to get down. Um, and I, and I have actually kind of been down in the dumps a little bit lately. Um, but you know, I, I just try to keep my head up. I try to be positive. Um, I, I look at the, the, you know, my daughters, um, you know, the, the, their smiles on their faces and just, just being around them. And I try to just not let this stuff get to me so that way I can be a better father. And, and you know, it, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's not easy. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, it's not easy, but um, anyways, enough of that. Uh, I don't want to bore anybody <laughs> with my personal drama. Um, my guest this week is none other than Jill Thompson. Um, she's an amazing artist and, um, she's been doing comics for quite a long time. Very creative, um, very unique style, very, um, you know, really, really good work with watercolor um, and just a creative writer. She's worked for so many amazing people. I'm not going to go and list everything right now. You can uh, look her up, but she's she's worked with Neil Gaiman. Uh, she's worked for Sandman with Neil Gaiman. Um, she's worked for DC Comics and Wonder Woman. She's started her own book and series called Scary Godmother, which is really cool. Um, she's uh, she's the real deal. She's she's quirky and fun, energetic, um, very creative. And she's, she's got a lot of passion and that's, that's why I wanted her to be on the podcast because, you know, she's got an infectious passion for what she does. And I I really believe that she'll inspire a lot of you artists out there, uh, to really, um, get pumped up, you know, for what you do and that sort of a thing. So please welcome Jill Thompson. Cool. So, Jill Thompson, we are rolling. So this We're is rolling. awesome. I'm very excited to have you on here. Um, and uh, I've been thinking about it for a little bit, uh, like what I wanted to talk to you about, because there's, there's, you know, there's so much that I, you know, I've look, started looking at your work on your website and just looking at, you know, you, oh, you, God. you, you do a, a lot website. of stuff. Oh, I don't know. Uh, just Jill I have a lot of old websites that oh, okay. don't even that aren't even um, supposedly supposed to exist online anymore. Oh no! Um, I always <laughs> send people. Yeah, who knows? I send people to my uh, Instagram because that's where I put art, and I control that part right now. And then I have um, a site where I'm trying to sell stuff, but that needs to be revamped because oh, okay. I'm mostly not good at getting stuff up on places. I. <laughs> ah, there you go well i wanted to uh like i was thinking about like you know just where to go with this because you do so you you do a lot of different things um from the scary godmother to wonder woman and i uh, do really awesome water watercolor work um one thing i enjoy too is uh you do like little studies uh watercolor studies uh that are really nice uh, but i know that you went to the academy the american academy of art um mm-hmm. as as i did yeah. as well another alumni and uh, what I was wondering, just just to, just to start this thing off, is you're you're at the academy, um, yep. and when you went, was it the, was it the two year program, or was it the full? No, uh, it was uh, no, it was it was not accredited school at that point. Yeah, Still, yeah, um, okay. I think it was a two year program, but I went three years. Oh, okay, um, I've done four years 
but I started working in comics while I was in school. So, oh, cool. Um, and then I couldn't afford it because, yeah. you know, yeah, it's living it's, on your own and you're just hard. 19. So, so, um, so when you, when you were done though with school, what, mm -hmm. uh, where, how, where was your start? Like, what, when you were done with school, were you just right away? You were, you were already doing comics. You said when you were going to school. So I was did doing you? Comics while I was in school. Yeah. I started while I was actually going to school. I started working for some tiny companies. I also started do, work, working, um, doing some gaming uh, for role playing games and stuff like that. Okay. So I was doing the school curriculum plus anything that I could pick up at the time. And of course, you know, it wasn't super great work, but I can say that before I started the Academy and then once I got into the Academy, uh, I improved massively. Yeah. So it's like once I had the framework and the rules and knew how to apply myself, I was a very good student. Uh, I had, um, I listened to all my teachers throughout my education, uh, <laughs> and I'm a very good rule follower. So when my <laughs> fundamentals teacher, who was Dale Popovich, a watercolorist, told me, if you are not going home and doing three hours of homework every night, you are not going to make it in mm. this business. So I did that, and subsequently, my first month of fundamentals, I was done in like two weeks. His other um, rule was, if I see you, and you think you're finished, I'm going to tear up all your work and you're going to have to start over. And I was definitely afraid that that was going to happen. So I was like trying to fake a <laughs> watercolor drawing for like two weeks in front of a still life to try and make sure that, that he wasn't going to tear up everything that I'd done. Um, <laughs> so I learned how to juggle crazy. my workload a little bit better. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, I was working, I was doing that. Uh, I was working, doing teeny tiny comics jobs because I, Wanted to work my way up to bigger comics jobs. Yeah. So what was it like when you were first starting? Um, you know, uh, just as far as, did were, did you have to, uh, you know, work work at a cafe or something like that while you're doing it? Or were you just like full on jumped right into it? Like what, what, what was it like when you were first starting out, basically? When I first started out drawing comics, I jumped straight on into it. Yeah. Um, I took any kind of job that there was. The only jobs I've ever held before, I did work at a cafe like when I was, in grade school, high school, very briefly mm -hmm. at like a bakery cafe with, uh, a, but you know, too many old men like to pinch young girls' butts at a cafe when you're topping off coffee. <laughs> I was like, eh. um, <laughs> Gosh. and uh, my father, my father gave me some great advice. My father has done nothing but my, my father is not an educated, um, you know, higher education, um, worker you know blue collar worker uh, he said don't get stuck in a job you hate that you'll be doing for the rest of your life just because of the benefits mm. which at the time i thought he was just telling me something and i realized he was telling me what he must have done to himself you know like he got uh -huh. to a job that paid tips or um had benefits and then he had a family and then he felt like he couldn't go any further with it mm. so um I stuck doing kind of manual labor jobs that were okay, but I knew I didn't want to keep forever. Like I worked in a, and they were always comic related. I worked for a comic book retailer. I worked in a comics distribution warehouse, filling orders and lifting heavy boxes. So I could still do comic stuff. Hmm. And then from the moment <laughs> I started going to little tiny comic book conventions, I just started getting work. Um, and my first apartment, my roommate uh, and I, you know, I was at home trying to draw the comics during the day and she worked as a waitress. And um, so we we scraped by enough to live up in Rogers Park. And then the more work I did, then that work becomes your resume. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So and you show like, oh, this company hired me or I did this backup story. And then they're like, oh, OK. And then you get asked to do other stuff. Um, but I, I also did a lot of, um, you know, spot illustration. I worked for a guy that made rubber stamps, you know, like for $10 an illustration, I would um, come up with a hundred mouse rubber stamps, you know, like, oh, uh, yeah. So 
I, I did thousands of illustrations yeah. for that guy. Um, oh, that, that's a weird job. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit um, – that's, that's one of those weird jobs where – I mean, I, I've – like one time uh, someone offered me a job that um, they were like it – was, it was just really funny because it was, it was something I never even would have thought about. But it was like they wanted me to do uh, Christmas um, designs that they were going to print on, on plates, like collectible plates, you know? Oh, I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> but there was like, like a weird thing where I was like, oh – because at first they they didn't really explain it very well. Like they, we want you to do these illustrations of Santa Claus and stuff, and I was like, oh, that kind of be kind of fun, like the old Coca Cola type stuff. So I was like, yeah. thinking that'd be kind of fun to do, and um, and then they were trying to tell me the dimensions and all these different things, and I I had to figure. I'm like, wait, is this this is for plates or something? Like, what do you, I don't understand what this? Like, oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna mass produce this on plates. It's like party goods or something? Yeah, it was really strange. Um, I didn't end up doing it because after all the back and forth and everything, they the 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 pay was like really really bad. <laughs> I was like, that's not oh, yeah. that's gonna work. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've also done advertising work. I've done storyboards. Um, uh, some of the people I went to the the academy with um, started working in advertising, or they had storyboard studios and. Because I was drawing comics every once in a while, my one friend Dave would call me up, and they would have some kind of emergency that would happen. You know, working in any kind of you know book industry or something like that, a client at 4:45 will change their mind. Like, oh, instead of our our logo uh, character being a dragon, can he be um, like a purple kitty cat? <laughs> and that's back when, like, people were rendering stuff with a marker. You couldn't just, you know, somehow yeah. grab a piece out of it. You had to redraw all the all the frames. And um, so because I could draw people out of my head and the other guy that was working, uh, he would have to use more photo reference. Um, he was going to have to redo the product like 75 times in the course of a weekend in all of these frames. So my friend Dave would bring me in. He would go, Jill, we we need you to come in and you know tell me how you know i could pay you this much money you're going to be staying here overnight i'll bring you guys or not overnight the whole weekend i'll bring you guys food because we have to present at nine o'clock in the morning <laughs> so <laughs> we're like okay and that was really good money but it always kept me away from, i was like this is what their job is all the time there's no creativity yeah. there's constant um emergencies that'll happen at the whim of an art director or a client who has no idea about art or composition or whatever and so i could do that every once in a while but i knew i could never do it forever um yeah. and i was happy that i had my comics to fall back on um not fall back on but you know in between times it was like thank god i have another series to work on yeah because if i had to work in advertising for the rest of my life i think i wouldn't want to draw anymore yeah yeah i've definitely had jobs like that before where you're just like this is this is just not fun at all. This is actually this actually feels like work, like a job, where you know what I mean. Like luckily, you know, like I think what we do is we enjoy what we do so much that you know for the most part there's there's jobs I do that are not as exciting, but it's like I'm still doing a painting and you know like it might be a boring portrait of someone that I don't even know who the hell they are, but at least I'm doing a painting. But then there's those jobs where it's right. just like, oh my gosh, this is the worst. Like I, I had this, I had this one job that I did. It was an advertising thing, and um, they offered really good money. I was very excited about it, and I, it was like some kind of a, a an alcoholic uh, beverage that was supposed to have the the or no, it wasn't alcoholic. I don't think it was like some kind of an energy drink that had like the okay. power, it's going to give you the power of a tiger or something. So. They wanted this, drink. yeah, and they wanted this energy, like they wanted this, like it's like in a nightclub, and a guy's hand is reaching across, and he's holding this, like I uh, wanted to look like a real, realistic tiger, but it's the size oh, okay. of, it's like the size of a can, so the guy's got his hand holding it like it's a can, um, and then there's like a nightclub, there's so there's people in the background dancing, so I painted this thing as photorealistic as possible, it looks like a real friggin' tiger, um, the lighting and everything, all every little fur on this thing. And then they they would come back and say it's we don't really feel like this is realistic enough. Can we can we try to make it even more realistic? And I'm like, it looks like a friggin' photograph, and I don't know what to do. And I kept going back and forth, and then I, I finally was just like, 
I don't know what else I can do to make this more realistic than what it is. I, I'm, you know, I am an, I am a painter. I'm not a photo manipulator. So, um, right. and, and all this work I put into it and then they were like, you know what, we're going to go in a different direction. And, and then I got like this terrible kill fee for like, like, I mean, basically I didn't get paid for it. You know, I got like a very, very small amount. And then um, I, I heard that they just got someone over the weekend to do a photo manipulation of basically the same thing I did, but uh, they literally just photo manipulated pictures of a real tiger and all this stuff. So it's just like, man, this, this there was one of those jobs where I, I tried explaining from the very beginning, hey, you do know that I'm a painter. Like I draw and I paint. Like, like I think what Except you, you know. That what you paint doesn't even, sometimes doesn't even look like a painting. It looks like a photograph. So I don't, I don't know what their problem is. No, but those kind of jobs are like so like um, just like uh, draining, like mentally, emotionally. Yes. And you're just like, I just put all this time into this thing. And, and then, you know, and then they don't pay, you know, it's just like, oh, I, I thought you were going in a different direction with that. <laughs> um, because I, and it was, I was like, oh my God, I love you. You're reading my mind because, and then I felt validated that I wasn't the only person that had, a, had an experience like this. It drives me crazy when you're dealing with art directors or a client for some kind of agency like that. And they can't verbally express to you what they want. Yeah. Yep. I once worked on a worst. project where they gave me a specific idea of what they were looking for. They wanted me to do this. Um, uh, they asked me, could uh, I draw something in the style of Linda Berry? Okay. And thanks to the Academy, I could because you're supposed to go out with your portfolio and kind of get whatever jobs coming your way. Yeah. Not, just uh just this job that's in my style which is why i think a lot of my comics are not always in the same style it's in the style that comes out organically for what i'm doing like my sandman style and my wonder woman style are certainly not the same as <clears throat> scary godmother and i didn't start out to draw them in the ways that they look it just happened that way so anyway so i i start copying and do an illustration as if Linda Berry did it. I made kind of like a, a Christmas themed thing that they had wanted that was actually funny. Um, God, I, I should have pulled it out, but I didn't know I'd be talking about this. We spent three weeks they coming back with suggestions. Now, Linda Berry has a very distinct style. Um, what they ended up wanting was something that looked like Barbie from like Mattel. They wanted like a, an illustration of something that looked like a Barbie doll. Yeah, those are two completely opposite ends of the spectrum yeah. <laughs> styles. And um, but what they had to keep doing was like and I had a rep at that point and the rep would go back and he would talk to them and they would give him notes and he would come back and give me their notes. And I would try and change things based on what they said and think that I was fulfilling what they wanted. And then, you know, as they continued to chip away and chip away and chip away at it. And, and finally, I said, well, they. You know, they were giving me notes like, you know, can sh can this be less um, dark? And I was like, what do you mean dark? Like dark with a lot of ink or dark as in? And like, um, hmm. you know, she's more, you know, and they said, could she be more pretty? And I was like, okay. And they're like, can you take away these lines? Pretty much take away everything that made it look like Linda Berry, <laughs> which is the actual name they gave me when they started. Yeah. And, and that's what I thought. And then I started to break it down, what I got paid, how long it took me to do it, and how much aggravation was involved. And I felt like I got paid like 76 cents an hour <laughs> yeah. to do this. Yeah. And and then I, I was again, nope, the money they dangled at me at the beginning was certainly not what followed through yeah. <laughs> because of the time involved and the fr sheer frustration involved in just trying to do what they wanted because they didn't know how to express what they wanted or what they wanted at all oh yeah and Th that's frustrating comics is not like that yeah that's very frustrating i've had jobs like that too where they you you like I've, I've done the same thing that you just said where i like realized oh my god like as mo much time as i put into this i just realized i'm making like way less than minimum wage on this job like this is i've like there's there's specific I don't want to say the magazine because I don't want to, uh, but uh, there's one particular magazine that had me do this job that was so insanely detailed, 
and I, I, can't, I and it was only for five hundred dollars, um, but I did it because it was a bigger magazine, and I was like hoping it would open up other doors Good and different exposure. things, and but I could not exposure. believe how difficult um, they were and and how much they expected out of me, and I was like, you re realize that I, this is like. I'm, I, I almost feel like I'm doing it for free at this point. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And you're just like, this I mean, is insane. Like how, how much... many times you agonized over a, a tiger paw yeah. to make it more realistic. And it's like, how many extra hairs can I add or sh like make this nail look, com claw look completely real? And they're like, well, it's not realistic enough. I was like, you might, are you going to just chop off a tiger's hand and put it in this picture? Yeah. You know, it, it can be very frustrating sometimes. Um, so you brought up, uh, the scary, uh, scary godmother. When, when did you start yeah. coming up with that, that idea for that? That idea happened accidentally. Like I think most good ideas happen. I did, uh, I was in between comic jobs for a while in the, uh, comic book industry. There was a huge boom in, in comic sales and, um, nobody worked on one book for a very long time. So you'd kind of jump from story arc to story arc. If you were working with a, or this was also a way that writers got to work with a lot of different artists. Mm. Neil Gaiman made it popular on Sandman because he would have different artists on different story arcs. And before that, that really wasn't done so much. You would be contracted out for a certain amount of years and then people would switch and go to different books or there'd be art teams that would go to different books. I'm sure mostly because you just kind of got tired of drawing you know, Green Lantern for like seven years or something like that and you wanted to draw something else. Hmm. Um, so I had been working on The Invisibles, I had been working on Seekers Into the Mystery, I had been working on Black Orchid because writers would say, oh, I want Jill Thompson to work on this arc. And it's like five issues, and then you would jump onto something else. Um, so there had been a big boom in comics like that, uh, but the speculator market had caused there to be a giant bust afterwards because Image Comics had made everyone think that every comic was going to sell a million copies and mm. they would do all these different covers and and um, there was plenty of work and because there were so many different little companies. But uh, when people who were speculating on comics, you know, like I'm going to buy the first issue of this comic that has a million copies out there, two years later, they found out that they couldn't sell it for the price of an action comics number one, which the only reason the first appearance of Superman <laughs> is valuable is because it is extremely rare because so many, you know, millions of copies were destroyed and only some people who accidentally hid them in their basement or their mother put them in a chest somewhere, you know, as, oh, they mm -hmm. like this comic when they were a kid. That's the only reason those things are valuable. Um, so suddenly this giant speculator market caused a bust and there was no, I was happily leapfrogging from comic book title to comic book title, enjoying the creativity of that and collaborating with a lot of different writers. And suddenly like they took my next lily pad away and there was nothing because everyone that had been offered a, uh, like an exclusive contract with a company on a certain book um, grabbed it because they saw the bottom falling out of, artistic opportunities. I hmm. just happened to be a little bit later and that and everything that people had offered me already had artists on it. So suddenly for the first time in a very long time, I didn't have a regular comic to work on. And um, I was doing odd illustration jobs here and there. But um, I also had the had the time to work on something of my own. And the, and the way I came up with the idea for that is, um, I was going to be an auntie for the first time. And uh, when the baby was born, I also kind of wanted to be her godmother. Uh, but I was a lot more goth than I am right now. <laughs> and I thought about myself standing in the back of a church, Catholic church or whatever, <laughs> with my motorcycle jacket on, which I still do wear, um, but with all my black and my hair was bigger and crazier than that and big, crazy, you know, Technically, actually, if I didn't have this sweater on, I would be almost dressed in the same exact thing. Um, <laughs> but I thought, huh, I'd be a pretty scary godmother. Yeah. And I said those words like that, and I had this picture in my head of this little witch fairy, kind of like a Tinkerbell style, but with bat wings, 
and um, black tutu, witch hat. Um, and I sketched her out right away. And suddenly ideas just started happening from that. That's awesome. Um, and I was like, I want to make a book for the baby then, you know? So it, And then I was like, okay, well, then the baby will be the little girl. And she's going to learn that sometimes it's okay to be scared and, you know, just, and, and things that look scary aren't always scary and, and that you can be brave and, but not in an overt way. And, um, who would she live, who would scary godmother live with? And she would, there'd be a monster under the bed and blah, blah, blah. And it just, everything just started happening. And I'd never had an idea before that just kind of steamrolled in that way before. Um, up until yeah. that point, I have like little doodles and cool sketches of characters and interesting things that still look interesting. They just didn't have any traction behind them. You know, they didn't have a, a, this world just started building itself and continues to do so. So that's awesome. That's like, I mean, it's really cool. You know, when I, th I think, I think I heard, um, what's his name? I'm blanking on his name. The guy that, that started the walking dead comics. Um, I don't remember um, his name. You, uh, Robert Kirkman? Uh, Robert yeah, Kirkman, yeah, yeah, I think the writer? Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or Tony Moore, the artist. Um, I think... Or well, Charlie Adlard, the current <laughs> artist that has been drawing hundreds of issues of that. Oh, I don't know which one. I think, it was the, I think I was listening to an interview once with... I think it's the guy that started it. It was like his idea or whatever. Okay. But he was talking about that, like how he just... The writer. You know, it just, it just almost started writing itself. It just, just started happening. And uh, that's really interesting. I mean, that's... That's a really cool thing, um, especially when, when you are not just an illustrator, but you're also a writer as well, where you can kind of just create your own, and, you know, your own universe. Um, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, I've, I've, that's something that I really want to do. Um, I don't know how I'm going to find the time, but at some point I really, well, it's, well, one of my bucket lists is to do a children's book of some sort. Um, uh, but, you should just do it. Jump in there and do that. Yeah, that, but that, that the hardest part for me is um, would be just the writing. You know, I have a lot of ideas. So much inspiration. So yeah, I've got a lot of inspiration. Um, I, I can write a book right now about uh, teenagers and how they drive me crazy. That would be a fun book. Um, <laughs> That's a great title for a book. Teenagers drive me crazy. Yeah. With such cool illustrations of like teenagers. Yeah. That would be oh my god. See, this is that, See, that'd me, be funny. <laughs> that's how that happens yeah um one of the best things i ever did for myself um was take improvisational comedy classes oh that's so cool. i studied at second city training center and um players workshop here in chicago and that helped i mean that's how i write started writing stories for myself hmm. because i had been collaborating with people um on their comics for you know i would just get a full script which is kind of like a movie script yeah. style thing and then you you draw what is requested of you but you put your spin on it I mean, because there's no way that even if it's described you're going to draw what's in that person's head so it, it is a collaboration and if you're lucky enough you're working with somebody who you know um who wants some of your input as well they want your your stamp on it yeah um but when i first started when i had had the idea for scary godmother and i was trying to figure out how do i get all of the stuff that's in my head out on the page. How do I paste this? I know how to do this because I've been doing it my whole life, but I didn't know how to sit down and write a story. So what I did first was I sketched out little thumbnails of what I wanted to happen. And then I went back and wrote it based on those thumbnails. Oh, and I see. Um, once my characters were established, I got better at it. Um, once my characters were established, I'm able to take I call it like the improv way of writing because I was like, give me a who, what, and where. I can stand up on a stage in front of people and still go back and do that type of thing. It's like you just take suggestions from the audience and you create a vignette of something. It might not be funny. It might be horrible or it might be sad or it might be dramatic, but you're creating a little thing based on their suggestion. It takes away what I call the um, you know blank white paper fear because everyone's like, mm. I'm going to sit down today and I'm going to write the best children's book ever, you know, <laughs> but you just, you know, or I'm going to sit down today and I'm going to write the best comic book character and the best story ever. And then they're paralyzed because I don't know how to start. I don't know what to say. Usually jumping into the middle of it with both feet and you saying teenagers drive me crazy. I could make a book about that right now because <laughs> I'm having all of these ideas about teenage things or stuff I did when I was a teenager or oh, stuff yeah. my brother did when he was a teenager. Um, 
but you have a great way to combat that. You can just start writing a list of all the things I, that I way like, they drive I, you crazy. Yeah, I can. I can make a. I could just even even the things that that are said, the phrases. Um, <laughs> you know, you you know. I, I always I always joke um, with my fifteen year old now. Like, you know, she'll she'll say something, and I'll and I'll say to her, "You're so woke, girl. You're so woke." You know, and and it drives her <laughs> oh, crazy. She's like, Oh, Dad. She's she's like, oh, seriously, oh, you know, but um, you yeah. must be so incredibly embarrassing to her. <laughs> oh yeah, it's fun, it's really fun. Um, like I'm I'm putting on, you know, I'll put on music in the car when I pick her up, just that the music that I think that she'll like. She'll be like, "What are you listening to?" I'm like, "I don't know. It's your shitty music, you know. <laughs> I don't like this. I'm putting it on for you, okay? Uh, but um, it's fun." But yeah, it's it's definitely uh, it's weird having a teenager and having a one year old at the same time. It's very wow. strange dynamic. And then in the middle is my twelve year old daughter, who is just starting to become a young lady, and she's like, you know, things are changing, and and she's getting, you know, um, she's going through emotions <laughs> and all these things, and she's like in the middle, and it's like, so there's a lot of like. It's cra It's crazy at the silent yeah. household right now. <laughs> you have a, you're you're having a household right now. Yeah, it's a little bit crazy, but um, but uh, yeah, it's fun though. But uh, yeah, you're you, that that's inspiring though. I think, for I think for a lot of people listening to this, that uh, just I think I think if someone asked me a question. Let me just I'm gonna look at it right now. But uh, were there questions? Or, there was like one question. Um, oh. I love yeah. taking questions. I, um, that's another good way. But this to... this happens to go with what we're talking about because I, I think it's it's really cool how you explain how you you came up with the idea for Scary Godmother. But the question was from um, uh, I don't know if I'm I'm probably gonna mess this name up as I usually do, but um, Garav Shadre Shadra I don't know. I can't see your name, buddy. Um, you have a question. Your there question. You your question is: What is your favorite subject for illustrations, and how did you develop it? So, I mean, that's kind of a broad question, but um, uh, it changes every day. One of the reasons I was doing those little paintings is um, I would see something. It was it was trying to challenge myself to be more painterly because I felt like I, you know, um, I draw comics with paint. I'm, I'm, I'm by no means do I paint the way you paint or the way Alex Ross paints. You know, I like I can paint something that's realistically, but man, I can't paint something the way you can paint it realistically. And then I started to worry that I, what if I can't paint paint anymore? What if I can just draw? You know, mm. and um, and so I set myself out a task. I tried, I failed um, at the number. I wanted to try and do a painting a day, a little painting a day, and it had to be of something I saw because not no pressure there. Um, so, because it also helped me keep a really good compositional eye. Um, so sometimes it would get down to be like 11 o'clock at night and I was looking around my house for like, oh, the light hit this certain way. Uh, but I'm very, I don't want to say, uh, anymore. I, I get really inspired by the way light hits things or ordinary yeah. stuff or an alleyway. I mean, I love an urban landscape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Or still, you know, little still lifes where I I still have a bunch of them on my phone, and my plan is to go back and fill in the blanks. I, I think I've I only made it through like 300, which is still a lot of paintings, because um, I want to put out a book of all of those. But I feel like I need to have almost all of them done. And when I travel, I bring a little sketchbook and a travel pan of paints with me all the time. Or even now, if I'm out having a meal by myself, which is fairly often. Um, I've sketched something while I'm sitting there, use my water that they bring me to start painting <laughs> while I'm at the table or if I'm in an airport or something like that. Um, so usually it's something that I see during the day. I like, um, you know, something that has a really good composition or a light that inspires me. Um, yeah, that's, and then that's good turn, practice. That so. type of subject inspires me with a story. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I love the best about being a comic book storyteller and I try and teach my students is that anything can spark a story. You should be able to make a story out of nearly every sentence uh, that's presented to you. Uh, I've been doing this long enough that I can't read a book or the newspaper or anything without starting to break down the story into panels 
and page layouts. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, so that's, any book, I feel like I'm almost hilarious. adapting it every time I read it or, you know, whatever type of story. I'm, I'm like, this is an overhead shot and this is this. Mm. And then that's a close up. And then this would be great if it was five panels because you need the reaction time. And, you know, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's interesting. So, I mean, that's, that's great that, or bad. I don't know. It's it's I kind of have the same thing as far as like it's I can't. I can't ever seem to turn off that part of my mind that is constantly like like when I'm talking to you, I'm looking at you this entire time, and I'm thinking about how I would paint the the color of your hair next to the the, the, the light that's hitting your face right now. Like I'm I, the the green. I set it up like that. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the green bouncing off your sweater, um, um, in contrast to your hair and everything. Like I can't stop thinking about those kind of things. Like you know, just driving. Uh, it, it's really kind of crazy when I drive up to visit my family in North Wisconsin because it is just absolutely gorgeous up there. And sometimes when does the, it take you a lot longer to get there because you're constantly pulling over to take photos or see something? No, I, that's how it is with me when I'm going. I'm up just there. I'm just driving and I'm just like, like whoa, like the the colors are, are just insane right now, and, and I just get distracted and it's just like, and then and then I I get distracted by how all the trees look and and like just the shadows they're casting and the colors and. Um, and, uh, but I'm always thinking like, like, how would I, how would I try to capture that? And it's like, it's just like this thing that doesn't stop. It just constantly stops. And like yes. when I ride like the subway or the train, the L train or whatever, and I, and then the kind of people like I, I've, I've gotten, I've caught myself before just staring at a guy, just staring at him and he's looking right at yep. me and I don't even realize I'm staring at him. And, and he's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> and I go, Sorry, dude. Sorry. Like, but he literally, this guy said that to me, and I, I was sitting there just going like, just staring at him, and and I, I, I don't, I forget that he's a person there, but the shapes and the character and the way he was sitting and and everything about it, I was just like, this is amazing. Um, and you know, you start drawing in your mind, like if you don't have a sketchbook, you start like kind of like, how would I, how, how would I capture that character and. This is how you capture that. <laughs> I've stopped several people now. I don't care. I mean, I will ask them. Um, I've met and befriended people because either their look is amazing or they're standing in a certain way and the light hits them. And I'll stop and I'll go, excuse me, I'm not a creep. I'm not a weirdo. Can I take a photo of you? I'm an artist. And the way the light's hitting you, I really want to paint you. Yeah. There was a construction worker I still have to paint. He was uh, working at Wilson. Um at the L, they're doing all this L reconstruction there. Yeah. <laughs> and I was in my car. I, I drove by. I saw him standing there. The way the light was, like, he was standing with all the, you know, stuff behind him. But then the light was hitting his really bright hat, his really bright, you know, construction coat, that yellow kind of stuff. I pulled the car over immediately. I'm going <laughs> to, oh, I have some really great Jill needs to find reference, almost gets arrested stories. Um, <laughs> pulled the car over you know, got out, ran over to the guy and I was like, excuse me, um, I'm an artist and I was an, I, I'm not a weirdo or anything, but can, can I take your photo? Okay. And you have to look back that way. I was driving by and the light was hitting you and he's like, what? I, you know, sometimes <laughs> dudes think I'm trying to pick them up and, <laughs> that's, that's um, awesome. then other, <laughs> um, and then, <laughs> but they're also like <laughs> freaked out <laughs> and, um, yeah. or, I, I, or uh, there was a, girl like there was a girl on damon uh under with she was wearing this crazy fur coat and she had this really bright lipstick on and looked really cool and then there was another couple that i took a picture of in the and and i thankfully i've painted all of them in there my teeny little sketchbook um but that's how i find oh no <laughs> what jason what's the matter? i have a connection lost on here uh hold on one second. i don't know if i should still talk Hold on, I'm gonna push pause. But yeah, that's really that's really interesting. Um, I love hearing stories from other artists too because I, 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 it lets me know that I'm not a total crazy person as well. But here's the difference: like if I was driving around Chicago and saw like some woman and pulled over and be like, "Hey, can I take a picture of you?" I would definitely be the, like a creep, you know? I'd be like, "Get away from me, you weirdo!" <laughs> <laughs> Especially with that freaking mustache. What are you doing? Get away from me! Um, but I have done that before. I have gone up to people before and just like, or, or I've done like, you know, covert photos where I just like, <laughs> like, like I got to sketch that person. Um, 
in a. Well, like, I tell them. I mean, I I tell. Thankfully, with the with the technology we have right now, you can be not a creep immediately. You can just say Google me. Yeah. And they look you up and go, oh, you are an amazing artist, and then be <laughs> yeah, like. Can do that. And then if you decide to be creepy after that, then that's on you. <laughs> I did one one time. I did. I've got an oil painting over here uh, that I did. Um, I. I just I saw this this I was I wanted to to film myself doing like an oil sketch, um, and I never released it. Maybe I'll release it someday. It, it's a few years old now, but um, I there was like this homeless man. I was I was walking around looking for someone interesting, and I was filming it because I wanted it to be like this almost like a real documentary of I'm gonna find someone on the street, someone I think looks cool, and I'm going to ask if I can take a photo of them, and I'm, then I'm gonna film myself doing a painting of them, and then um, I ended up seeing this this homeless man um who was standing next to a, a mcdonald's and he was he was like you know asking for a change he said he was really hungry and everything and i was like this guy's perfect so i just said hey um if i give you 20 bucks you can go get your food and everything else um i'm gonna do a painting i want to do a painting of you um uh, and uh, i'll give you 20 bucks if you let me take some photos of you and he was like he was like so excited he was like you're gonna give me 20 dollars and you can, he goes, you can, you can take any kind of, any pictures you want. What do you want me to do? He was like all excited and everything. Uh, and so, um, yeah, I don't know. Part of me would feel weird <laughs> about that, but then, I mean, I would, yeah, I want to compensate him, but I can tell, I, I do understand, you know, I've walked by people and I, just, I was like, I don't want to exploit this guy, but the sun is hitting yeah. the bags that he's sitting next to in a perfect way. And I would love to take a picture of him. I was like, then am I exploiting the fact that he's homeless? Because he wouldn't be sitting here with bags if he ha wasn't homeless. And yeah. By then, it is. It is. Away. It is kind of weird, but this. I mean, like that's why I was like, you know, I felt like I got. I'll give you twenty bucks, you know, like cause I feel bad. I don't want to, you know. I just I want to do this painting, you know. Um, but he was so excited about it, and um, and the cool thing was, is I was I found him again, and uh, I showed him the painting I did, and he was just like, <gasps> he was like, that's awesome. He was like, you paint, you painted me. And he was like, "That's you, and you know the funny thing too is when I, I gotta find the, I got a video, I, I have the whole thing recorded somewhere. But um, the funniest thing is when I was explaining to him how I wanted to do a painting of him, he was very confused at first, and he was he was saying to me, "So wait, so you want me to paint you?" And I was like, "No, no, 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 oh. no, <laughs> I want to do a painting of you." And he's like, "Cause he's like, cause I can't paint." <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, I can't. I was like, "I'm not asking you. I was, I'm just asking you to just." just look natural and uh, just stand there. there and I'll take a bunch of pictures. And uh, so that was pretty interesting. Um, but I think that's, that's what's cool about being an artist. You know, you can't sometimes, you know, certain things come up and you, sometimes you just can't pass that up. You know, you get um, in a but groove you're also of a musician too. Yeah. So there's the other thing I was, I was thinking about this because it's always um, wonderful to, you know, to be at a party or be out someplace and suddenly realize there's another artist around and you can talk and then you can talk about things like the way the light is reflecting in that shadow and how much turquoise there is in there. And it's like you're speaking a language that people don't understand or talk about perspective in a way that other people don't understand. Um, but because I think of things, I think in a more visual way, even down to how I, you know, compose a picture of the or how i plate my own food so i can take a picture of it because <laughs> it should look appetizing but it looks up I, I do that for me before i do it to take a picture and put it on instagram or some other thing that people do nowadays um because i'm always thinking of things in virtual terms like move that cup so it's not a tangent but oh. i can't imagine <laughs> i do i do that sometimes I can't too imagine not only having <laughs> beautiful images or be in your head or seeing something in a certain way but maybe also having a soundtrack or music that pops up now that you need to get out so it's bad enough that i need to sketch something but oh my gosh the additional um you, you know it, it's it's funny i you do, know I, juggling act you have to do to have like and now i also have a song that i need to play or get out or record or yeah. write down or do I, something I, I will with. do that like it's like awesome I'll, I'll i'll take my dog for a walk and uh and I'll start, like, I'll, this is not even a joke. This is this this happens all the time. I'll just be walk my dog. I'll be going, I'll just start doing these 
like com- like coming up with drum beats and weird. T- and then I realized, oh my god, oh, I'm walking wow. down the street, doing. I mean, if, if anybody walked by, they're like, what's wrong with that guy? So it's it's weird. I think I think artists in general are just we're, we can't. I mean, it, it's I don't know. It's awesome. It's it's. I think it's the cool thing about being an artist. But at the same time, other people that aren't artists probably just think we're completely nuts. You know. Um, <laughs> well, I do know Which they I'm think it's easy. With, but... They think it's easy and it's not any work. That's the one thing I do know they think. They yeah. might not think we're crazy, but they think <laughs> it's some kind of wizardry. Oh, if I could just like snap my fingers mm-hmm. and make the, what I'm seeing in my head appear on the page without 14 hours of working on something, um, that would be great because I could yeah. get a lot more done. I usually I usually tell people like when they're like, oh, I wish I could do what you can, what you do. I, I would love to be able to do that. And in my head, I'm always like, no, you don't. Not really. I've heard like it must not. It must be nice to not have to work for a living. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my god, I feel like I never stop working for one reason or another. Yeah. You know, I do take my my breaks to keep me sane and physical <laughs> activity and all this kind of stuff, but. There's so much I, I, you know, that has to be completed, and so much that goes into creating just one thing that you do. There's so many steps. Yeah, that's it's true. You, it's it's I, I that that drives me nuts when people say stuff like that. It's like, oh, you have no idea, like no idea. I mean, the amount of hours, um, you know, you know. And here's the thing too: the one thing that I like, um, I, I'm not sure what what it was like for you, but when I was growing up, um, I was obsessed about drawing, and it's all I did. And I, to the point where I was socially awkward and weird, I didn't have friends. I got picked on all the time. I got bullied constantly. Um, I basically spent all my time alone just drawing because that was that was kind of my – I could create my own universe, basically. And I, and I, and, uh, I had my own superpowers in a way where – um, I, I've told this to, to, to some, someone recently, but I used to have this fantasy when I was a kid that, you know, if, if I got kidnapped by, by some crazy people, I could show them my ability to, to draw and they would use that uh, to their advantage to like, you know, like whatever, like I would be safe because I could show them what I could do. And it, that's like really Aww. messed up to have those kind of thoughts. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean? What? <laughs> just I wouldn't you know you're thinking about being kidnapped that's not good yeah um, I see yeah. my saving grace <laughs> my saving grace was the thing that I've always wanted to do was comics I mean um yeah I didn't fit in <laughs> any place um it wasn't until I got to art school that I realized oh there's a bunch of people like me yeah right. mm-hmm. for the first time ever I felt like I had a social group um it wasn't that I didn't you know get along with people in grade school and high school and stuff like that i just felt like you know like the biggest loser you know um i didn't like any of the stuff stuff that was happening but by then i'd already started pursuing what i wanted to do and going to little comic book conventions and there i found people who liked what i did and and were nice to me. And, it depends. Um, it depends you know, on where you, like you know, where you grow up. Like for like when I, where I grew up um, in North Wisconsin, um, I got picked on for being an artist and a musician. Like it was not, you know. I remember I got I got picked on for wearing uh, uh, Converse Chuck Taylors, you know, stuff like that. Like I'm I'm familiar with where you grew up, so I understand. Yeah, it was very. Uh, it was, you know, I was basically a freak. You know, I was the freak because I like I I want to I just I'm the guy that draws things all the time and. You know what a freak. Oh really? You know. You mean it, there was no back res- in the day. There was no respect for it in my before school. Before the nerdly renaissance that we've had right now, <laughs> oh, being yeah. the only girl that liked D and D and or wanted to draw comic books in yeah. a Catholic high school, that uh, <laughs> was not necessarily like the top yeah. person that everyone wanted to hang out with and or go out with. You know. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is weird because like right now my 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 uh, 15 year old she's going to Sen um, um, High School. <laughs> And uh, she's it's it's all an art program that she's in. So her entire wow. high school is all based around art, basically. Really? So, oh man, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's really cool. So she got accepted. You go, Seth. Yeah, she got accepted. She had to like submit like an art portfolio and all this stuff, and they only accepted a certain amount of students uh, every year. And she has like two art classes a day, and then her rest of her classes. But everything 
develop it's all about like developing their portfolio and trying to prepare them right. for school and stuff like that for college so Teach them business they need a business course yeah and it's and it's just funny because i i, I talk to her all the time I'm like man i'm i wish i could I, I, like like this would have been the, my school like i would have been yes i, I would i would have fit in i wouldn't have gotten picked on all the time um uh, and i'm like this is amazing yeah. you know like because uh the, the the school is really um also very diverse which is really cool you know the school i grew up it was just uh you know a bunch of white guys white kids <laughs> and we and we and we didn't have any I, I remember i remember when i was a kid for example um, Were your sports football and angry? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like it was just it was like so unusual to like, you know, like for example, like if we were gonna get Chinese food, if we ever, I remember one time we went to this Chinese restaurant in the mall. There's not yeah. even anybody Chinese working there. <laughs> we it was just there's no diversity. So and that's what's cool about her school and like I love that they they're growing up in the city where they they get so much diversity and so much culture and. Um, there's so growing, you know, part of my whole thing was growing up in North Wisconsin. Um, you know, I love it up there, but it was definitely uh, me too. I totally yeah. love it. Up there. Yeah, it's oh beautiful. Oh gosh, I'm happy that I spent a majority of my childhood half of the time in Wisconsin, half the time in the city. I have a huge appreciation for both types of landscapes, you know. Oh, yeah, but uh, it, it's it's definitely strange, you know, and because like, like I said, my, my dad's an artist, and so I grew up around art my whole life. and and uh, it's just it's just one of those things where certain places people just don't get you. They're like, no, we don't get you know get what's happening here. But but uh, that's just the way it is. I, I'm grateful now, you know, um, as an adult, as an artist. Um, I love being an artist. I love being the the weirdo, you know, <laughs> in certain situations now. You know, when I show up to like adult parties, uh, and they're like, who's that? weirdo with the mustache and the tattoos and then like oh he's an artist you know <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so now it's like more like it's it's more the quirkiness is acceptable you know <laughs> well i mean i think art is you know who grows up without the, i think very few people grow up without some kind of angst or insecurity or or whatever um but i do know that uh when i was growing up the thing I was interested in, there were no other people I knew that were interested in it. Yeah. Uh, I love now going around, I talk at schools and libraries, and I've been on television a bunch of times. And I remember at one point, I had a news anchor lady ask me, you know, like, why comics, Jill? What made you decide to go into comics? And I was like, um... I don't know, did you read comics when you were growing up? And she's like, yeah, I read comics. And I said, why did you stop? Because I never stopped. I don't have an answer for that. It's like I always found something interesting to read. I wanted to make them. Um, I wanted to create my own worlds. I wanted to be Charles Schultz or Frank Miller or Mike Mignola or mm -hmm. somebody that was writing and drawing their own comics or Jack Kirby or whatever. Um, well, Jack Kirby plus Stanley, not one or the other. Um, and... She said, I don't know, I guess, you know, at a certain age, I just started to become interested in, you know, sports and school and boys and whatnot. And I said, I was interested in all those things, plus <laughs> comics, <laughs> you know, yeah. I didn't have. And I like Batman. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't, I didn't drop one for the sake of the other. I was able to incorporate all of those things together. And um, when I had bad stuff happen in my life, which I did, um, and bad things happening in in my family i feel like comics uh saved my life because mm. i had that world to escape into where other people may have escaped into you know drugs or drinking or just like general bad behavior that would cause them to veer off into something else i escaped into a world where there were other people like me and i am going to praise chris claremont X-Men comics, <laughs> Chris Claremont, John Byrne, X-Men comics, because my weird fantasy, not like your kidnapping fantasy, <laughs> was one day I would develop mutant powers and yeah. I would be whisked off to Professor Xavier's school for gifted youngsters where, <laughs> much like Kitty Pride, I would be welcomed into this group of m mutants who were, you know, not understood by the rest of the world. So yeah. I feel like the artists were, you know, we are those who didn't fit in with what, you know, kind of 
more mainstream high schooly culture would be where you know football and dance and <laughs> things that i actually tried to participate in but you know like i my mother still has like four dresses that i bought in high school it with the hopes of being invited to some of the dances that were going to happen like homecoming oh, 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 no. winter ball our school was weird. You had to have a date to go. You couldn't just go with a group of friends. Oh yeah, that's and weird. I had I and I was not shy about it because Archie Comics made me think <laughs> that I was going to have a Betty and Veronica style high school experience where I would ask a boy out and they would say yes, or lots of boys would want to ask me out and I would be like, I can't decide today which boy <laughs> is going to be my date. Yeah. None of those things happened either. So um, I had a lot of, I have a lot of dresses uh, that I never got a chance to wear um, <laughs> in that, that period of my life. And again, spent my time drawing comics, going to comic book conventions, planning on becoming a, an artist uh, as, as a way to, I suppose, not, be all depressed and full of i mean i have my regular teenage despair and depression <laughs> yeah compounded with uh family situations that made it really sca kind of sp spooky but um comics you know i really the focus that i had on what i wanted to do and what i was creating um i think really helped me through a tough time period yeah no I, I definitely pleaser. think that, that that happens with you know those of us that are artists, like for me, I, I can relate with that. Like my drawing definitely helped me get through a lot of stuff because it was like it was it's almost like a like a meditation in a way, you know, kind yeah. of helps you focus and refocus your thoughts. And, and, and I'm uh, a I'm a good student. I'm a pleaser. Uh, I know that about myself. I am a very giving person. So um, but I like so when I was in school, I wanted to do really good because I wanted to do like what the teacher told us, you know, because you would get, you know, oh, great job, Jill, or these are all, this is all correct. So when I started to go to comic conventions and um, people like Bill Reinhold uh, or Mitch O'Connell or Lennon Delsol would give me um, critiques on my art and point out things that I was doing wrong. And it was lots of things I was doing wrong. But then they would show me, they would tell me why, you know, I was doing it wrong and that everybody does it like that when you're first learning, but this is how you do it right. Mm -hmm. And this is why you do it right. And you should go to this art school that we went to. Um, all I wanted to do every time they gave me notes like that was go home, fix it, come back to the next convention to show them I learned what, what I, you know, what I did wrong. There was no arguing like, Oh, but I draw this way all the time or I'm hmm. copying this comic or whatever. Um, I, I, you know, I, I use that thing I now know about myself to my advantage. So when I went to school and Mr. Popovich said, you have to do three hours of homework every night, I did three hours of homework every night <laughs> because he said so. And why would he tell me something that wasn't true? Yeah. Um, so I feel like I, I, I kind of helped myself get better because I wanted, I want, well, I wanted to be as good as I possibly could, but I wanted to learn everything that I possibly could. And I also wanted to do a good job, you know, it was like, I want them to be like, this is great. Instead of I'm creating some kind of, you know, art, art, yeah. um, or like fine art. I was like, I want to be a commercial artist. I want to be a comic book artist. I want to be an illustrator. And I want to learn from the people that know how to do that. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's build it's, on it afterwards. There's, there's, I remember when I was going to art school, um, there was there's many times where students were like how asking me like how do you do what you how do you do that i don't understand how you can do that um and and i was i was always trying to be nice but at the same time i was like i'm the first to class i'm the last one to leave I d i'm not playing video games in the hallways um you know i and w when the teacher's doing a demo i'm watching the teacher i'm f like there was a lot of times where a teacher would be doing um a demo a painting demo and nobody's watching and so I'd be sitting there right next to him watching everything he's doing. Nobody else is. And I was always like, this, it always oh blew my, my mind. Like, what are you, what, why are you paying to come to this when you're not actually, <laughs> you know, it doesn't make any sense to me. My, I had to get a Pell Grant to be able to go to the art school. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't have a face. 
face-to-face -face interview, <clears throat> which was something that you could do back in the day. I don't know if you can now because the school's different. Um, also, when I went to academy, it was two classes a day, which I think was the best way. Mm -hmm. had, and you had fundamentals in the morning, life drawing in the afternoon. Yeah, so that's what it was like years, for me too. For three years, we had <coughs> three or what, three and a half, four hours every day of dedicated life drawing, period. So five days a week, that's 20 hours of life drawing. I hear now they have like an hour, yeah. a couple of days a week, or something like that. And I'm like, Huh. And even my students that I teach, I'm like, when are you, you know, like I give them assignments the way I had assignments. You need to draw a hundred hands by the next time I see you. Like of what? And I was like, you have two hands at the bottom of your arms. Make them do things. <laughs> yeah. You've got yep. this. You can take pictures of your hands doing weird stuff. Your hands do like, it's not just holding a cup. It's, you know, um, you know, like putting in your contact lenses or, uh, you know, like, being worried, you know, it's like your hands are doing so much talking and expressing and acting yeah, exactly. that you're going to have to do in your comic book work or any kind of work. I should be able to look at what's going on on this page and have a great, like 75% understanding of what it's about without having to read a word balloon or a caption or having to read what this movie is about or whatever. It's like, I should know they're scared or mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> and your body tells that story just as much as any written words so i do that in my schoolism class on uh, portraiture I, I i teach a realistic portrait painting and drawing class and uh the first half of the the course is um like for example i do demos on drawing eyes and then i want the assignment is i want you to do between 30 and 50 eyes and i i give them yeah. examples and and then the next lesson is about noses and mouths, and I want 30 to 50 noses and mouths. And it's like the reason is because when, once we actually start getting into composing the whole portrait together, by that point, you, you should know how to draw eyes and nose and mouth like very, very well because there's so many times I see people's portraits, and they just leave out certain things out of the anatomy and cer certain proportions and things are just not there. And it's like so I, I try to pound it into them. Like you're going to draw this many ears. You're going to learn how to draw ears because um, it's it's really important and I think a lot of people um, they you know they want to kind of skip over the hard work sometimes and just get into hey I want to do a painting in color you know when they don't actually understand values yet you know oh, um, yes it's like just you got to learn the, the, you know you have to you have color to, you have to kind of baby so step it a little bit you know you, you don't need to jump ahead if you don't have this other thing figured out you know um, if it I want to talk about that for comics. Every single thing you learn about painting and composition and color theory all goes into comics. Yeah. You know, it's like comics are not a pinup. Mm -hmm. Comics tell a story in a way that no other medium gets to tell a story. Mm -hmm. um, we mimic film in a certain way, but we have actually, we have to wor we worry about a page turn. You have to pay attention to how much uh, dialogue is going to be there. If you have a writer you're collaborating with and they think they're writing for a movie where they can write ad nauseum and there's freaking word balloons all over the art, they oh. are doing a disservice to their own storytelling. They should be talking they should be having art direction happen and the words that are on the page should be like um, uh, you know that fine you know like a little truffle oil on top of your thing too much and it's unedible or like yeah. I, I always use a cake analogy. Your comic should be the best, most delicious, wonderful, moist, awesome cake that people start eating and say, oh, my God, this is the best thing I've ever had. And then someone goes, oh, wait, there's more. They're like, what do you mean more? And it's like they just put that perfect amount of icing on top of it that enhances what's underneath there. Not that big birthday cake end that's that big flower at the end of the birthday cake where there's this much cake and <laughs> all of the icing because you first think you want that part. Yeah, because you say like, oh, this is good and it's sweet, and then like three bites into it, you're like, I'm gonna hurl because this is too much sugar and lard for me. So it's like <laughs> comic book storytelling. If you're if even if you're writing a, a story for yourself, your first job is to show, not tell, mm -hmm. and your job is the same as in any other composition or illustration. Your color theory has to be there for a reason. You're using mood. You're using shading, lighting everything you're using pacing you're using the space in between the gutters as these like micro moments or eternities so it's it's hmm. it's not just put a picture in that square and take this um you know uh this program that can put lettering on there for you or or fill it i know how to fill color in in photoshop 
Do you, you need to know how to use Photoshop as a tool because of color theory. And you also yeah. need to know about value. And you also need to know about, you know, um, not over rendering things. And you also need to choose a nice color palette that's perfect for the situation. Um, and you need to do it in a timely manner. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's one thing There's I was going to ask you is when, when you're doing a comic, um, when you're doing a comic, how how much time do they give you for for like let's I don't know how many like like you, you're doing if you're illustrating a whole book, um, you know, because you're not just doing well, the cover, you're doing like in a, per in a perfect world, you can do a comic in a month, but you ha you have to make yourself do a page a day. Um, I have been very timely and and even early with things sometimes um and then i have been and do you the hand them in or ever like a, do you hand them in every um, day or do you, you have to... to hand them in you used to hand them in but you scan them like my physical artwork I, when i'm done um with something i have i still work on paper mm -hmm. um other people work completely digitally um so i have to scan my art in and then send files and then some people would like you to provide the originals just in case so they can they can scan it in in case they want it different um Do, or but i mean but, like but that doesn't happen very often anymore when you're doing uh like when you're doing one a day what i mean is do you hand do you actually ha like send them the image that day or like do they they want one no a day or do you just if you're late you do if <laughs> If you're late, you do, um, which yeah. <laughs> has happened to me. I mean, uh, my track record used to be stellar, and then, you know, in a couple of years, it, it got a little messed up. Thankfully, I'm back on track again. Um, but usually, you, you save it up and you send in, like, it, it used to be you'd send in a certain amount of pages every week. But now, I know DC Comics likes things in halves. Uh, because it's like a pay, pay structure. Hmm. The, they pay on certain days, so they want to get all the art in. At You know, you have to have it in by a certain time on a certain day. And then, because they they cut, you know, in, they do invoicing and checks hmm. okay. in a certain situation. Um, but sometimes you're not always doing the whole book. Like, there have been things I've worked on that are bigger anthologies, and I'm doing four or five pages of it. So you turn it in whenever you're done. You yeah. know, like immediately, and, and because they're working with a bunch of different artists to try and get things finished. And if you're the only artist, you're just trying to keep your regular schedule. Um, sometimes people turn in things weekly just because it's easier for them to give themselves a quota. Like I'll turn in six pages by the end of this week, six pages by the next week. So, you know, to keep themselves on track. Yeah. But then they'll get paid after every two weeks. So. Mm, okay. Um, I so you do you've you've done like Wonder Woman comics and stuff, and I was wondering like with the movies that came out with the, recently, did that affect the yeah. comics at all? Like the Wonder Woman stories, I or book, I had a book um, that came like they had planned for the year of Wonder Woman's seventy fifth birthday. They had different things that they wanted scheduled coming out. Like one was in concert with a, like Grant Morrison and Yannick Paquette had a. Um, a graphic novel that came out um, in the springtime because of a certain Wonder Woman historical something that was happening. Then, in accordance for the movie, they wanted to launch something else. And then, on the date of the actual 75th, her 75th anniversary, my book came out. Um, so, I, it 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 didn't it didn't. Um, elevate the numbers of my graphic novel, unfortunately, but I know that it did uh, affect, I think, the the regular monthly comic hmm. uh, that that sales. So um, sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, it's kind of weird. You know, it's funny. I I was talking to someone about this too, and it's it's. It, I heard that the the comic industry has actually been like very slow. With like, and, but it, it it seems weird because we've got so many comic movies. It seems like it, the, the comics would be huge right now, like actual comics, because well, you know the movies are just like they're coming out with a new movie like every week. It seems like you know. Yeah. I mean, and there are people that love comics, um, but a lot of times there's there's a few interesting phenomena that go along with that. People 
who go to see the movies don't necessarily pick up comics. Yeah. Um, because they love these characters the way that they've been introduced to them is on screen. Hmm. Okay. So that's what they like. Then they also have video games and stuff like that that they're interested in. Um, hmm. In the comic book world, uh, what we've found a lot of times is people of a certain age don't necessarily feel they need to buy comics. They can find them online or share them. Um, and the comic book industry is an industry that's based on sales. Yeah. So, you know, if your book sells certain whatever thousands of copies, they look at, you know, they have, um, they have a break even number because everybody that works on a comic gets paid a page rate. So they have a budget per page per comic in addition to the budget for printing it and distributing it. Right. They need to make that money back. Mm. Um, so they can continue to make other comics. So it's like, uh, but uh, I know a lot of people, there, there are websites out there where people upload their comics that they get. Uh, we try and provide comics in as many forms as possible. So there's digital comics and different versions to try and give people comics in whatever way they like to read them. But sometimes, I mean, there's a generation of people that are used to getting a lot of stuff for free. Like I've never, like people who have never paid for a movie, they find a way to stream it online for free, um, or BitTorrent their comics, or um, do whatever kind of file sharing for music. And and the only person <clears throat> that that eventually hurts. I mean, sometimes people freely sharing their own comic ends up making them sell tons of things that they compile compile in a graphic novel later other times people will do that and other and 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 the, their reading public will just expect that they're always going to give it to them for free you know mm. um so it, it's i don't know how to break that code but it does affect the publishing model yeah uh, as it has been in the past um it also creates a lot of new work for people who are creating if you have to not only do your work, but then market it now in a new way that's going to help you make money, which is why I see a lot of people doing Patreons and other uh, and Twitch channels and things like that, because they need to be able to monetize their ability to create your entertainment content. But as a consumer, I know I don't make enough to give every single person that I love the, enough money like per month for me to either watch TV shows or read certain comics or be able to, to get the story that I like. Um, so part of me is very on board for people being able to go directly to a fan base. But then another part of me realizes that sometimes it's been easier to have someone who takes care of your publishing and your distribution and dealing with um, readers and fans and stuff. So you have time to create because when you do all those other things, you're creating a lot of more jobs for yourself and giving yourself less time to produce. Mm. Um, I'm starting to learn how to do that better. I'm starting to learn how to delegate some of those jobs to other people, which is fantastic. So I do have more time to create. And uh, but there are people who've just taken to it really, really easily, and you know have taken off and have become their own, you know, um, comic phenomenon right now. So I think that, you know, in most entertainment industries, everyone's trying to struggle and figure out as things change over to a different type of either economy or um, viewership or readership or whatever. How do we how do we make it possible that you can live and do that at the same time? You know, hmm. yeah. because if I have another job that I have to do to support myself, it's going to take up all the time that it used to take for me to draw comics. So. <laughs> Um, I need my dedicated comic book time. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, we've been talking for a while, and we—I have I a know, bunch I told of. You. No, it's it's good. There's, it's awesome. I'm loving this. This is really cool. Um, and I almost even forgot. I just realized we. I, I have to show you some drawings. <laughs> so, I want to see them. So, um, as usual, part of the, part of what's fun about this is, um, I you know, ask if anybody wants to submit drawings. Um, and it's it's really really cool. I love I love doing it. I love being able to to um, to share with the guests, you know, what people are doing. From I mean, and it's awesome because it's people from all over the world 
and it's it's really this really is cool. So cool. Yeah, I love it. I love I love being so able to do this. So how am I gonna get to see this? I'm going to uh, share the screen with you. And so you already know how to do more things with this screen than I know how to do at all. <laughs> so, <gasps> oh, that's great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so this this one is by um, Asmadi Abdullah. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. I I love like I was I was you know. During the week, I just get all the, the submissions, and uh, it's interesting just to see the different takes that everyone has. Um, but definitely, I a lot of people are like, inspired by the like, scary godmother, you know. Pastel. Well, that's the pictures that I sent you. I was trying to get a good picture that would be <clears throat> caricaturable and not, you know, like it's my sexy Instagram picture. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, this one is is by Jay Cables. Yay! So it's cool. Oh my god, that's! I wish my hair was that color. <laughs> it's a cool style. I I really like I this. I love it. I love the hat. It's like a big flower. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And this... that one is on real paper. It looks like. <laughs> oh, the other one. <laughs> oh, that goes along with my Bowie knife. Uh, I this love is the that. one I was I telling you about. My Bowie knife class. I'm a I'm a cut I'm a I'm a cut, <laughs> I'm a cut, I'm a cut a witch. Oh, yeah. that's great. This is by Stephanie Ayers. <laughs> I'm a I'm a cut a witch. I'm a cut a witch. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Oh, that's funny. I like how the, the little pinky's sticking out. Like I know. Being very delicate with your dangerous fancy. object that you're holding. I'm elegant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Ooh, I like that kind of stuff. This one is by Dominic uh, Zeilinger. Um. Yeah, it's interesting. This is this is an interesting style. It almost looks like um what's it reminding me of? I guess kind of like a, like a South Park or something. I don't know, something about it. Like well, it the, does look the like simplicity. It's paper. I love the yeah. blending the the hair color. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Um It's like my logo. This this oh, one Oh, this is me in a couple this of years. A, <laughs> this was a scary one. Uh this is by Amit uh Hot or caught okay and uh yeah this one you look, look a little a little scary like scary a little tired. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. this is this is like after a long <laughs> deadline um, i have a uh <laughs> i've got a plan it's over <laughs> this one Where um <laughs> this one cracks me up this is by alan bush or boot butch i can't i don't know if i like it this is a friend of mine uh uh I've known him for a few I like years it now. Because it's my paintbrush, as well as my broomstick, <clears throat> and then yeah. the Oberon is. <laughs> but Alan, I have two cats, and I, Oberon is the more. Um, he's me. the one that gets all the screen time because he likes to do everything with me. Alan, I, I think, I love you, buddy, but you got a little phallic with this one, man. Like, oh, dude! When, when I, I didn't even think about when, that. Whoa. When I opened it up, I started laughing so hard. <laughs> It's so funny. I was like, I don't know if I can show wow. this one. <laughs> yeah, I was just but, looking at all the other details. Yeah. I didn't pay attention to that. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh my god. Very funny. There you go. I don't I don't think I don't know if that was intentional, Alan, but you definitely cracked me up, that's for sure. Uh this one's by Nicole Shepard. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, cool style. Yeah, it's it's kind well, of learn how to use this tool so much. Uh, you'll you'll it's you'll be able to do it you know what especially since you you paint traditionally already um it'll be even better because you you already have an understanding of how to this handle a medium you know? I, I suppose i just have to sit down and find the time to do it right yeah it's it's that's the trouble i think <laughs> uh this one is by ewan uh maktovich oh wow or Vish. and uh i think this is yeah this is digital <laughs> as well Okay, wow, because some of them are like, is that on real paper? No, I think this this one's definitely digital. It's like very, you can tell by the, the, the tone, the mid-tone of the, the, the skin and everything in the background. It's all like a flat. Um, okay. But uh, there's a lot of really nice digital, um, like like even on my iPad, um, I, I like to sketch on the iPad. And there's, I've got some, like my favorite thing, is my friend Grieger uh, gave it to me. Um, it's a pencil brush that his friend made and it's, it's not a brush. It's, it's like, 
it, it feels like a mechanical pencil. And it, one thing that's cool about it is it doesn't, it doesn't um, you can't make the brush larger or smaller, just like a regular, excuse me, just like a real pencil. Okay. You can't make a real pencil get larger and smaller. It's just, that's the size no. of the lead. And that's how they made, uh, how, that's how the pencil brushes that I like to sketch with in, um, on my iPad. Oh, that's good, yeah. So it feels very natural. It feels, you know, and it has like a pencil texture and you zoom in on it and you, you can't hardly tell. It just looks totally like pencil, so. Um, my, my, uh, one of the hurdles that I've been having of trying to understand and use any kind of uh, computer program uh, as the tool that it is, is they've added so many what I consider math-like options to, you know, just this, the flip of your wrist or your, your brush stroke. Everything is, you know, you pull down something, you have to choose its curvature. Oh, yeah. or there's all these, all these terms I don't know. It's like, how could I choose what to make this thing do if I don't know what it does when technically all I want to do is just do that. I want to like, just yeah, it, that, it, that definitely, <laughs> That definitely gets a little bit crazy sometimes. I, that's that's yeah. In on the iPad, they do that. Like the brushes in Procreate, like you, there'll be like so many different things you can do with it. I hardly ever mess with that. I just, you know, I just like draw with it. <laughs> I don't like. Yeah. Um, well, I I just recently got some more. Hey, they smooth me out. I like it. Ooh, look at my hair. It looks good. Yeah. This one is by. Um, this is the one. This is by the person who asked the question earlier, and I, I'm gonna, right. um, Gaurav Shadhari. Okay. Oh, man, I really hope I'm saying. I'm terrible at reading names. It's. <laughs> I need to work on that. <laughs> well, there are. You're dealing with this a lot of um, more complex names, things that aren't like yeah. traditionally uh, roll off the American tongue name. Yeah, or the North of Wisconsin no. tongue name. <laughs> Um, this one is by Ray Shipman. Uh huh. Interesting style. I like it. It's so, isn't it? Just... Water color at the bottom there. Yeah, yeah. It's very uh, um, interesting uh, technique with the hair too. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's got like a the the just the way that they did the hair just gives it this. It looks like it's moving, you know. It's very animated. Um, this one is by Justin Martin. You know what? I think this is the guy that I saw on Instagram. I think, I think he sent two. I I, oh. I, I might be wrong, but um, homework. I I'm confused now because I thought he sent me a different one, so maybe I'm confused. We'll see. We'll see. Um, this one is by Mike Crotty. That one I love. Oh my God, that's so cool. You look fabulous. I do look fabulous. <laughs> this is from my Broadway play. Yeah, it's very cool. And uh, this one, <laughs> this one reminds me <laughs> almost of Bette Midler. Um, I know from oh, okay. uh, Hocus Pocus. I, uh, but this, I get that Hocus Pocus stuff all the time. <laughs> yeah. This is by Jared Hobson. Um, In fact, this year at New York Comic Con, I was walking to the convention. I had my hair up. I was just wearing my regular clothes, and a guy says, "Hey, nice Hocus Pocus cosplay." And I was like, <laughs> I, and I know you're you not even bastard. making me the Sarah Jessica Parker one too. I know it's good. He's going for the best one. <laughs> this one's pretty cool. Oh, that one's adorable. This is uh, by Mikel Nolamas. The very, hat is the best on all of these. Yeah, very like nice every, and soft. The hat is so animated in every single one of them. It's like its own character. Yeah, yeah. It's like the Harry Potter hat. Um, this is an interesting style too. Yeah. Um, this one is by Jason Ferguson. Very, it's it's really. I like the ferns and plants in the back. That's like yeah. It's, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, pretty cool style. Interesting. Definitely very unique. I, I, w I was not expecting. I've never seen one like this so far for any of the submissions. So it's kind of cool. Nice. Um, Do you find most? Oh, that's really cute. Sorry, what Do were you going to say? Do you find most? Do you find most people are trying to do something like that apes your style as hmm. far as being like caricature, but very kind of realistically rendered when they send stuff in? Uh, because I like this one that's very cartoony. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I mean, there's, there's a, I don't, I don't, I mean, I haven't noticed that at all, but. Oh, okay. Uh, this one is by uh, Edder uh, Galino. 
I love it. Or Eater, maybe. Eater Galdino. I don't know. One of those two. Um, this one, it's funny that you brought up Jessica, uh, Jessica um, or Sarah Jessica Parker, because this one kind of reminds me of her a little bit. Uh, <laughs> you know, just the, 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 I don't know, it might be the eyes or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's interesting. Um, see another cool one with the hat. People are having fun with that hat. This, yeah. this one's by Julio and Cesar hair, Warrens. Hair is awesome. It's like a cloud. It's by, this is by Julio. Julio Cesar Warrens. Um, this is so cool. Yeah. It's pretty interesting seeing all the different uh, takes on this. Um, this one is pretty cool. I like this one a lot. Very creative. This is by it's Jesse like Navarrete. Um, I like that. Yeah, it's it's very it's very soft. Uh, really, like an interesting approach with values. Um, yeah, it's cool. So um, when you have this all edited, and good luck to you with that. Um, <laughs> Do you do you put on your Instagram all of these images, or do you save this just for the podcast? As far yeah, as I I I know I, I don't I I was doing that, but it's it's too much now. So if you want to see them, uh, you gotta watch the podcast. Um, uh, but I I will, um, at, at some point one of the cool things about the podcast is you you're gonna uh, privately like tell me which which one you like the most, and then Wacom is going to give them a uh, a Cintiq as a gift. So, Holy crap! Yeah, a small Cintiq. Oh yeah. my god, you're sponsored. I need to walk them. <laughs> I better start doing a, a caricature for it, except that it wouldn't be on a wall. Um, um, no, but that's it's that's part of the cool thing about it. But uh, this one is by um, Alberto great. Santiago, and uh, it's 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 interesting. Alberto uh, has like every single time he he sends in a lot. He sends in a lot. Um, at least most of the podcasts he's actually done, but every single wow. time it's like a completely, it looks like a different style almost every time. Wow. Um, and, uh, but also he's, he's, uh, it's been the funniest, he's gotten the funniest reactions out of people. Um, like I, I've, I brought this up a few times before, but with, uh, the, the best is if you, if you watch the, my podcast, I think it's episode four. And it's with um, okay. um, my friend Robert Ellis. He's the Texas piano man. Uh, he's a okay. musician. And uh, when when I show him the drawing of that Alberto did, he almost falls off his piano bench. It's whole, oh, it's really? hilarious. Yeah, you just gotta look. You gotta watch it. It's really funny. I'm gonna have to watch that one because I listen, but I don't watch it. Yeah, it's it's hilarious. Um, oh, I kind of like that one. This is by Juan Carlos Melo. It's interesting style as well. Yeah. And uh, Such great illustrations. And this one is by Laurent. Gers- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is by Laurent Gersat, and I think this one he said I it was with a a color pencil. Uh, so this is color pencil on paper. Oh, it's so real. Oh, 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 that's nice. Yeah. Uh. And this one's interesting too. This is by Lars wow. Eric Robinson. And uh, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> yeah, you're like it's it's like a. This is like a mermaid scary godmother. Or, I it, think so. Well, no, it's not really a mermaid. Well, it's I, just I, me. So. For, for some reason, I was confused. I didn't. I was looking at this weird. I thought the the back, the broom. The, the I fin. Thought, that's the broom was the fin. Yeah. No, it's like. Uh, at first, I thought that was a tail. And then I realized that. Yeah. No, that's nope. a broom. Okay. <laughs> I was confused. Interesting <laughs> uh, uh, color. I love the lighting from the sun at the bottom. Yeah. Um, and then the moon behind, so. Yeah, it's cool. You did a good job. There's uh, so many. I'm so, so, so exciting. <laughs> yeah. Now, this one is by Michelle uh, Pendergrass. It's cool. It's Again, cool. so many cool ones. Yeah. I have to choose one or you choose one? You you choose one. I'll send them to you and then you can. Oh, my gosh. Okay, that's going to be tough. I have nothing to do with, with it because. <laughs> I like it's more fun if the guest gets to choose one that they like. I like this one a lot. This is uh, by Justin oh, Martin. Okay. That is just my characters. Oh, and this this is I was just roller skating with those roller skates le- uh, like two Saturdays ago. So someone's following my Instagram. <laughs> that's funny. To find out the info, yeah. Oh, oh you great. got a stalker. Nah. <laughs> this one's pretty cool too. This is by Juan. Man- Where am I headed? Uh, Manuel, 
Yeah, it's interesting. Oh, okay. I know that probably wasn't in the picture. Yeah, something. I don't know. It's an interesting uh, kind of impression, you know. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Why did I? Why did the first word that popped into my name, pop into my head, be Egon Shield? And I'm probably fairly wrong about that. But uh, I think I know what you're. What, I I can see a little bit of that. Yeah. I. It might be completely wrong, <clears throat> but like those two words popped in, or his name popped in my head. So. This this has like. I don't know. It almost has like a. I don't know if, it, if cubism is the right word, but. Yeah, there's there, angularity there. There's something about it that it's it's got it. I don't know. It's interesting. It's cool. Uh, this is a very nice, oh. nice one. <laughs> oh my god, that's like it's my entire world all in one yeah. page. This is by Ivan it's Aginko. Not my entire. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. That's for my Spartan stuff, and it's got my <laughs> doll, and my pumpkin, and Oberon, and Wonder Woman. It's like, oh, some doll up. That's very cool. <laughs> and it's watercolory looking. Yeah, that's. I think it's all watercolor. Yeah. Very nice. Is Very it, good job. Is it, re, is it on paper? Yeah. Yep. This is. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, it's very nice. So it's, it's traditional media. Yeah, they did great. Or soon it'll be old-fashioned media. <laughs> um, and this one is <gasps> very creepy. Whoa! <laughs> That's awesome, creepy. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is by Fernando Mendez. Yeah. Fernando, I like that. That is. That's scary. <laughs> That's very creepy. <laughs> it's cool though. Uh, this is a funny one. This is by Benny Jackson. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's funny. And uh, oh, that, and that's the last one. That's the last ah, one. Wonderful. Um, Gosh, so many awesome characters. So yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. <laughs> Looking at all those those Good. drawings of paintings. Um, those are wonderful. But uh, but yeah, um, and I, like I said, I'll send I'll send copies of those to you so you can you can check them out a little bit more. But um, it's okay. always fun, you know, to uh, to do that. I I don't know if you saw the one I did with my buddy Tom Fluharty, but uh, that was a crazy one. Uh, there was ninety one submissions. Wow! It, it was insane, and so I had to only pick like a certain amount that I that I I mean there were all there were so many that were really really good. But I, I want. I gotta go back and look yeah, because I made an extra video. Tom has a very interesting face, right? <laughs> yeah. That has so many people well, wanting to do it. I mean, a lot of the you know a lot of the, the people that are submitting are into caricature, and he's you know he's a really well respected caricature artist. So I think you know a lot of them wanted right. to show him their work. But but it was crazy. So I had to actually make another bonus video just to uh, to because I didn't want to not show their work, but I couldn't. I I, I tried of to explain. Course. The podcast isn't about me showing other people's work. That's a small part of the podcast. <laughs> so, right, right. So we had to make an extra one, but, but uh, yeah, it was really cool. Um, so, uh, before we get going, is there anything that that you're working on now that you'd like to talk about, or anything that's coming up, or you know, can let people know what's going on in the world of well, Jill Thompson? Well, right now, I'm, in the world of Jill Thompson, I'm working <laughs> on some more scary godmother books. Um, oh, awesome. I'm, I've got an idea for a, a comic series I'm pitching to a couple companies that, I mean, I can't really necessarily talk about, but mm -hmm. um, the next thing that I have, uh, there's another Beast of Burden compilation uh, called The Presence of Others that Dark Horse is putting out. That'll be out in May. And so wait, what was that? The you, next, you... Beast of Burden is oh, uh, okay. a comic that Dark Horse puts out. Um, it's a... It's it's a story about these dogs and a cat that are the supernatural protectors of their neighborhood. Mm. Um, it will make you cry. It is very awesome. The writer is Evan Dorkin, uh, super talented, very wonderful um, artist, creator of Milk and Cheese and uh, um, the Eltingville Comic Book Club and uh, all, so many other things. But um, Beasts of Burden uh, is our uh, thing that we've collaborated <clears throat> on. Uh, also with another artist. Um, so that's the next compilation I have coming out. Everything else is just work in progress right now. Yeah. So That's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. Cool. Well, um, it's been so awesome talking to you about this. I, I mean, this was, I, this was awesome because it just felt like a really good natural conversation. I think a lot of people are going to – we were all over the place. <laughs> and I think it's really yes. good. I think it's good. I hope it's awesome. everyone enjoys it. Yeah. 
So thank you so much for doing this, and uh, we'll definitely have to do this again. Um, I, yeah. You know, it, it, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy talking to you uh, about all this stuff and uh, about telling you my uh, weird fantasies as a child about getting kidnapped. I don't know. I don't know what that says about your parents. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't it, even it, you wanted to run away. It's that you wanted someone to, to forcibly kidnap you yeah. and then prove your worth to them. Yeah. I, think I, I think I needed. Th I think I needed therapy. That's definitely. I feel like you should get a hug right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, I think uh, that's a good way to end it right there. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, you have a great day. You're gonna have to get back to work, and so will I. Uh, for sure. Um, all right. All right. Thanks again. We'll talk soon. Thanks.